lingering narrative concepts and furtive simplistic montage are the harbingers of the new semiotics. But language as a patriarchal construct of insipid teledildonics obscures the struggle for representational power and ideology. No. 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 We project perfunctorily the super societal oppression of convergent transaction with art. Convergent transaction with art. What do you mean? We... What's next? I... Yeah. I don't know. Well, this, what are this we doing piece is here? far ahead of its do time. You, uh, I, I don't know. I, I thought you... It's called The End. That, that's right. End with an E? Yeah. Well, well, it redefines the concept of cinematic narrative. you just invent God? Look, look, hold on a second. Something just came up. Um, I'm not God. I'm an animator. This is an animation. Your character is in this animation. <laughs> wait, wait. So we're like actors on this stage, right? And you're responsible for our actions and dialogue? Yeah, I'm doing this cool animation with lots of profound symbolism and political allegory. It's called The End. So you're on this stage, and you're reciting my lines, which will inject this piece with really hip artistic content. Everybody wins. So what about these sticky things and all these rods and wires in my head? Oh, those are metaphors. They symbolize your interconnected yet disembodied sense of self. What the hell do you mean by that? The bird thing. Yeah, what is that? Hand bird thing. Is that another yeah, metaphor? Yeah, uh, look, I can't say any more about that. I have to make these metaphors obscure so that the audience will spend lots of time analyzing them. So, the fact that we have no ears, is that another metaphor? Mm, no, the submission deadline's coming up and I didn't have time to do ears. That's called stylistic streamlining. Wait, this is totally wrong. I do not exist for your animation. I am conscious and I am self-aware. And not only do I have memory of my experiences, I have awareness of my memory of those experiences. If anything, I am creating you. You had no choice but to create this animation, okay? I have free will. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, sorry about that. So, oh yeah, this animation is revolutionary. It profoundly redefines the concept of cinematic narrative. Well, it subverts the dominant paradigm of social-political alienation in the late 20th century. Yeah, yeah. Look, I gotta go. Well, I'm trying to come up with a decent ending for this thing. Well, yeah, I have some ideas. Yes, for the ending of this animation. What kind of ideas? Okay, here's my favorite idea. There are these two hammers poised on the stage, right? And, and they represent oppressive forces in postmodern capitalism. And they crush the characters as... Uh, Pretty heavy-handed. Uh, okay, how about this one? The two characters realize that love is the only way to transcend their existential isolation. So they embrace each other physically, emotionally, spiritually, and politically. And become one with each other as they collapse together in a single quivering mass of love. No. Boy, that's a lot of work. You have any better ideas? Listen. Ditch the two characters. The ending of your animation is about you. Me? What what do you mean? I mean you are a work of fiction in your own animation. That's a lame idea. Wait, stick with me here. Your actions and your memories are created for you. 
because I'm fictional. So I can suddenly change form at any time, yes. I can become a 30-year-old white male and not even realize it. Or I can become a, a young Indian boy or an old man and never notice the change. But in my old age, I realized that I'm a work of my own fiction. Then I realized that as a work of my own fiction, I can create my own ending.